Hello everyone, this is Ming Zhong. Welcome to another episode of the S&P 500 Eminence Futures Daily Market Analysis that is for the session of 9th of October. In this video, I will be sharing with you the market recap from yesterday and also uh, the trade review that I had uh, in a 3 minutes time frame which I will include the entry, the exit and also the rationale behind. And in the trade review section, I will explain in detail how to actually trade the pullback and also the only thing or the one thing that you must do in order to have high winning rate when you're trading the pullback. And going forward, I will also share my trading plan for the session later together with the levels that I'm watching. All right, so let's get started. So as we can see in this daily chart for the S&P 500, so yesterday was another bullish day. And you can see that we're hitting the up channel that I just drawn up uh, yesterday. So that's the up channel. And I think we're just touching the up channel, hitting the overboard of the channel. And with the acceleration to the upside, so that's a bit of the climactic up move. Um, I will just dive into the hourly time frame and you will see a lot clearer in the hourly time frame. But before I do that, um, there is something that I want to point out, which is um, decreasing of the volume. So that could suggest the fading of the demand as well. So you can see that um, the up spread is a bit smaller compared to the previous day as well. And that's in the context of hitting the channel overboard and together with the resistance zone that I drawn up here, which is range from around 3450 to around 3480. So we just need to watch out for that. So let me just go straight into the hourly time frame. So you can see that um, yesterday actually during the US session was pretty tight range. So that's the US session around 9.30 p.m. in my time zone. So pretty much in a narrow trading range during the US session. And majority of the move happened during the Asian to the uh, European London session. So we can see we have a up move and then followed by a reaction. Subsequently, um, during the US session is kind of um, in a tight range. And during this morning in the Asian time zone, again, we have seen it uh, accelerate up a bit and currently having a reaction. So that's how it looks. But if you just take a closer look or a zoom out view for the uh, larger time frame or larger picture, you can see that we are right at the overboard line or we just hit the overboard overthrow of the up channel here and look at the move up here so definitely has the climatic nature so just watch out to have a reaction down so in order to complete the um, backup action or the uh, retracement or just a simple pullback before you can um, resume the uptrend to continue to climb higher so another thing that's I think there is some sort of the similarities with this up move together with this although this is a lot more climatic and also the gradient is different as well but still um, I think they are both uh, resemble as a climatic up move and especially when you read in the context so that's the up channel here and we just run into the overball of the channel so I think we have a high chance to see a reaction or a pullback at least before it can just continue to move up okay so everything looks uh, relatively uh, bullish at the moment uh, let me just dive straight into the three minutes time frame and let me talk about um, the one thing that I think every trader uh, should do when you are trading the pullback so first of all what is actually a pullback so until when is a pullback finished or done or completed 
So that is the very important question that we need to ask ourselves. So in in the context of this trade uh, happened during my time zone around 2 p.m., which is around, the, I think it's a European uh, session, it's just started. So let me give you a context of this trade. So prior to um, this trade happen, we have seen this kind of the rally up during the previous trading uh, US trading session followed by a change of character so which literally stopped this up move and into the trading range and the structure that I lean on for this trade uh, is actually need to go back to this larger trading range so I've seen this breakout so if you guys have been following my videos for a while, you know that I don't trade the first breakout because the first breakout, which is this big bullish bar here, always draw a lot of the supply. So if you, if you take a closer look, you know what I mean by the supply level. So let me just give you the context properly. So when I just zoom in within this time frame, then you can see how much is the volume here. So that's the normal volume uh, for this range here. And subsequently, we have this breakout. And you see this, uh, this is a resistance level. And here is the breakout bar. And we see the spike of the volume as shown in this green volume bar. So there's definitely a lot of supply hidden inside this volume as well. So together with the high volume equals to high demand plus high supply level as well. That's why we want to see how you actually react. So that's why I always want to avoid um, the first breakout. So as you can see, this is how you actually reacted. Eventually, it just resolved itself into another trading range. So here goes another trading range. So this is another trading range. And my trade actually happens somewhere around here. So I call it a pullback. This is how I actually trade a pullback. So why did I trade this? So first of all, this is a breakout out from this previous uh, range. So let me zoom out a little bit. So and this is the previous range and we see this breakout so that's the backing up action or the retracement or the simple pullback with a trading range so the context is we've seen a breakout and then we just want to see a pullback and where do we actually take the pullback entry to long so it's the key question so first of all, let's uh, revisit the question I throw to you. So what exactly is a pullback? And um, I'm sure that if you read some kind of the textbook or uh, some videos, then you might see that. Okay, so here's a range breaking out. Pullback test the um, originally is the resistance become support, and then you will just turn up. So that's the textbook case or the ideal case. Yeah, ideally, um, when we see this kind of the movement up, breakout, it should have the retracement or pullback and it will touch this uh, resistance become support level and then it will just bounce up. So that's the ideal case. But in reality or in real life example, it doesn't really always do like this or behave like this. So here is an example. Let me show you. So here is the breakout. And this is the resistance level and that's the pullback. Are we supposed to trade right after the close of this candle, this doji bar? Because at that time, it kind of touched the support level, the resistance, original resistance level now become a support level and it's kind of bounce up. So should we just tag that? I mean, the answer is clear, it's no. If you just take the entry right after the close and put your stop slightly below, then you get stopped out at this uh, bearish candle or the shadow here. 
So definitely not a good idea. So why is it a fail trade? I mean, the answer is very simple because that is the pullback and it is still in progress. It's not finished yet. So in order to trade pullback successfully, the one thing that we need to do as a trader when we trading the pullback, we need to seek confirmation when the pullback is ending, when the pullback is completed. So this is very important. So obviously there are a lot more details uh, in terms of the analysis, uh, the context, uh, the volume and also some kind of the structure. But the most important thing when we're trading a pullback is actually to seek for a confirmation. So in this case, if you think this is a breakout followed by a pullback, and where is the confirmation? The confirmation might be it just break out from this uh, immediate downtrend line. So somewhere around here could be your long entry and then you put your stop right below this uh, immediate swing low here. Otherwise, you can see that if you enter here, you put your stop loss here, you will be still in this trade for quite some time from early morning 10.30 until like uh, 2 o'clock. So almost like 4 hours, 3 and a half hours, still within this trading range. So yes, you are still in the trade and it's not stopped out yet and eventually you'll get this uh, profit. But your cash has been stuck within this trading range for 4 hours. I'm not sure how long can you uh, be patiently waiting for this kind of trade. But for me, if it doesn't really uh, go up to my uh, uh, desired direction, then I think I will be out maybe in one hour. So, but that's just uh, my trading style. Um, so, I mean, the confirmation is actually very important. So if you think this is the pullback, then you seek for confirmation by using this downtrend line. Then once it's break out, then that's your confirmation. So it's always better uh, than something like this. Okay, so it has been touched, then you just enter straight away. I was guilty doing this uh, many years ago when I started trading because I always think like, okay, so this is the pullback. When it's touched the support level, then we are good to go. So just go long, or this is a retest of the previous support level. But this is not always the case. We always want to seek for the confirmation. So if you think like why I take this trade right at the end, just before this up move, there is a reason that reason actually lies on the analysis within this trading range here. So here we go. Um, first of all, we have seen a spike of the volume. So spike of the volume equals to the spike of the demand plus supply. So that's the first clue. I want to see a decrease in the supply level. So the first reaction comes with also increasing of the supply. Look at the, the last bar here. So I want to wait for another test. That's why here could be the test, another test. So for me, this is the immediate trading range. So I just want to see some kind of the structure forming or I will just wait until it actually breaks out from this high here. So until somewhere around here, I was uh, attempting to long, but I didn't really see good structure. So in terms of the decreasing of the supply, I think that we have seen pretty much very good level of the supply level because it's very low at the moment. But you can see that right after we have this move up, move up here. So this is kind of the best rally if we compare it to either this, this, or even this one. So this is a very great rally in within this small trading range. And that actually follows by quite a nice uh, shallow type of the reaction. And it actually forms another higher low here. So that's why I just would like to trade this kind of the reversal. I just draw up this middle downtrend line and didn't really take this first entry. So the second bullish bar is my entry. And also I kind of use this localized structure. So you can see that we have a, a little swing high level here. I just want to see some kind of commitment above. So this is how I actually confirm my entry. So using different kind of the technique, 
So eventually I just um, anticipate a breakout of this level and also uh, anticipate that the movement can just hit the channel overboard. So if I zoom out a bit, you probably can see the uh, the up channel here, the trend line. So that's the target that I'm looking for. So you can see that my exit is somewhere around there. Let me zoom in and give you my reason why I exit the trade there. So you can see that um, we are very close to the uh, channel overboard, which is pretty much my target. And I just uh, spotted this rejection tail here, this rejection bar, and that's with the increasing of the volume here. So subsequently, we have a low volume bar, and then we have another increasing of the volume. And at this time, the progress to the upside is even lesser. So I just uh, exited right after the close of this kind of the doji bar. So that is uh, my trade. And eventually I end up getting about reward to risk ratio of 2.1, which is uh, pretty good. Uh, I'm very happy about that. And also look at the holding duration is kind of a bit um, two, two o'clock to around um, three o'clock. So it's about one hour. So I'm very happy about the holding duration as well. All right, so this is the trade review. Let me get back to the hourly time frame and let's talk about the current market condition and market outlook together with the levels that I am watching. So here we go. So this is the uptrend channel that I drawn up uh, yesterday. So you can see that we are right at the channel overboard. So I think together with the climatic up move and also the channel overboard, I think it's a very vulnerable to a pullback or reaction down. So the immediate support level that I am watching definitely is the 34.30 to around 34.20. So this area here could provide some kind of the support level. If we go a bit deeper, then I think 3400 will be another support level. So it's kind of into about half of the uh, up channel here. So this is about halfway of the up channel. So this is the support level that I'm watching. So anything that can um, form some kind of the reversal signal for me, then I might just go long. And of course, together with quite a lot of the other contexts that I need to analyze, such as the volume, the structure, the candles, the price, etc. And if everything goes well, then I think definitely we have a um, chance to see S&P 500 to test further up, up move upside. So the next resistance level will be around 3480. So right now, 3450 or 60 is right within the resistance zone here. So if we can just successfully um, overcome this zone, then definitely we will have chance to see S&P 500 to test all-time high level or even break all-time high. So that's my view. And in terms of the um, trading plan for later part of the session, then I, I think I'll, I'll be looking for a retracement pullback uh, for long, somewhere around the support levels. Otherwise, um, so far, although it's having a a pullback right now but the price action is not bearish at all i haven't seen any kind of the confirmation to give me a go ahead signal to go short but certainly um there's a chance to trade it down so a short entry could be valid as well so that's my plan for the session later all right so this is the end of the video i hope you enjoyed it and get something useful from my video if you like the video just click like and also hover to my name or picture to follow me do remember to subscribe to my channel so that you get instant notification of my future video ideas so as usual if you have any kind of the comments suggestions questions track ideas you'd like to share with me feel free to comment below i will reply to you thanks for watching and Happy Friday, I will talk to you soon.